Hey, I am so glad you are here. If you don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Zach. I'm the middle school pastor, as you can tell by the skinny jeans in the game to start the service. Uh, but we believe church should be fun. We believe uh, that it's, it, you should come every week ready, excited for what God has in store. And we're starting this series for the month of September called Better Together. But I want to say something first this morning. It's a request I have for you, and it's this, is that we stop going to church. We stop going to church. Some of you are like, wait a second. First we play a game, then the, the youth passes up there in his skinny jeans, and now he's telling us to stop going to church. Like, who hired this guy? Listen, I believe we need to stop going to church and start becoming the church. We need to stop going to church. Going to church is not what God called us to do. God called us to be more like him. God called us to be transformed into an image of him. And we are not just to come into a building. We need to stop just coming into a building, and we need to start becoming the church. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you this morning that we can gather here, that we can have fun in your house, that we aren't just coming in, going through a motion and leaving, but we can come in, we can have fun, we can make connections, we can be transformed, we can be renewed, and we can be sent out, God. I pray that you would speak to us, that we would jump all in this morning. In your name we pray, amen. This morning, the message is titled this, I'm in, kind of off that song that we just ended with uh, during worship, saying, if you want my heart, I'm not going to second guess this, I'm not going to doubt this, I'm in, I'm yours. And that's what we're speaking on this morning. Where does this come from? Psalm 92 is where we're going to be reading this morning, starting in uh, verse 12. And it says this, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree, they will grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Let's talk about this for a moment. All right, we have a palm tree, we have a cedar tree, and they are what? Flourishing, right? Everyone say flourish. 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 What does flourish mean? I don't know about you, but this is not a word that I use in everyday language. Like if you were to come and talk to me and say, hey, Pastor Zach, how are you doing today? I wouldn't be like, oh, man, I'm I'm flourishing. I'm I'm doing, I'm just flourishing. That's not something that I would say. Also, I, I... when I think of this, I like to picture being at a gym and someone's like doing a bench press and they're getting after it and you're like, bro, dude, you're getting gains, you're getting jacked, man, you're flourishing, right? <laughs> They'd be like, what, who are you? Get out of my face. But this isn't a word that we, that we normally use, but I love uh, the image that it gives us here when it talks about being planted. Flourishing, it means thriving, it means growing, prospering, being a blessing. It says that the righteous that the righteous will flourish. And then it's compared to a cedar tree, it's compared to a palm tree. Cedars, they're known for their durability, they're known for for their strength, for being uh, pleasant to look at, pleasing to smell. Palm trees, they're they're a symbol of of triumph, of victory. In the Olympic, Corinthian Olympic Games, when someone would win, they would be presented a palm branch. When Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey, it was known as the triumphal entry. There, were, there was palm branches there. It says that the, the righteous, they will flourish. I'm flourishing. I'm growing. I'm blessed. I, I'm blessing other people. I'm pleasing to be around. I'm planted. I'm strong. I'm victorious. You're flourishing. I think it's also important to notice that the, both of these trees, the cedar and the palm, they are evergreens, which means that they are all year long. Continue reading verse 13. It says, planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of God. It doesn't say those who go to church, those people will flourish. If, if you come to church on Sunday, if you come to church on Wednesday, you're going you're gonna to flourish. It says those who are planted. Everyone say planted. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they are flourishing. They are blessed. They are connected. They're emotionally engaged. They, they're making a difference. They are fulfilled. They're, you're flourishing. Unfortunately, some today, if I were to ask you, you wouldn't use the word flourishing to describe where you're at. Instead of saying that you're spiritually flourishing, maybe you'd say, I'm spiritually, I'm, I'm spiritually dry. Instead of saying that you're thriving, you'd say, I, I'm wildering. Instead of saying you're fulfilled, you say, I'm searching, I'm, I'm longing for that thing that would fulfill me, that, that would completely, what am I missing? I go to church, but I'm not flourishing. It says those who are planted, they will what? Flourish. All right. You guys can be louder than the 8, eight, eight o'clock service, all right? 8 o'clock service, I was all sorts of jacked up because I just drank a, a coffee, and they all just stared at me, so I need a little bit back from you guys, all right? All right. So the planted, they will? They'll flourish. Now, when I read this, I'm like, God, sign me up. 
I want to be a tree. I'll be a cedar. More importantly, I'll be a palm tree. Send me to Florida, God. I'll do that. I'm in. I'm yours. Florida. But what I've realized is this is where lots of us can be. We're, we're, we're like, I want to be a tree. I want to be strong. I want to be growing so big in my faith. But God, what I've realized about God is he doesn't plant trees. He plants seeds. Lots of times we want to be this big tree, but we have to realize God doesn't plant trees. He plants a seed, and you need to recognize that your life is a seed. You are a seed. What, what is that? A seed has tremendous potential, to, potential to grow, to, to thrive, to multiply, produce fruit, to be a blessing to others. But a seed, a seed has, uh, that is not planted has potential to lie dormant, to be unfruitful, to, to be unproductive, dissatisfied. Your life is a seed. What do we know about seeds? A seed can only grow if it is planted. It can't grow just lying there. It needs to be planted. Who flourishes? Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Those who are planted in church. Matthew 13, Jesus gives us this parable of this farmer. And he says this, starting in verse 3, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked out the plants. You see the metaphor here. Some people, they have potential to, to grow, but they never go anywhere. They, they just stay where they're at. They, they never go deeper. Some, they start to grow, but then they fade away. They, they start and they, they're all excited at, in one moment at church and then they slowly fade away. Some start to thrive spiritually, but the worries and the concerns and the stress of this life, they, they choke them out. But then Jesus said in verse 8, still other seed fell on good soil. What soil? Good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. That one seed, it becomes a blessing because it was planted in good soil. It was planted in good soil. It didn't, just, it didn't just lay there. It wasn't on a rocky spot. It was planted in good soil. This one seed becomes a massive blessing to all, all these people. It produces fruit because it was planted in the house. Man, you, you can be a blessing. You, you can grow so strong when you are planted in the house, when you are planted in good soil. I want you to realize this morning that, that, there's a, that there's a difference between going to church and being planted in church. There's a difference between going to church and being the church. You can hear it in the language. Hey, are we going to go to church tomorrow? Ah, uh, I don't know. There, there's a game on. Like, we got all this yard work to do. I, I'm, I'm real tired. I mean, I guess if we go, you know, we could go out to eat afterwards or something like that. I, I, I'm not sure. Are, are we going to go to church? Listen, when you are planted in the house, you don't ask, are we going to church? You don't ask, are we going to church? Because the church is not a destination to which you attend. It is a posture. It's who you are. I'll say that again. The church, it's not a destination to which we attend. It's who we are. So the question, are we going to church, that doesn't even exist to us when you are the church. That's like you waking up this morning saying, hey, kids. Hey, do you guys want to eat today? Like, does eating sound fun? I'm not sure. I was thinking about this. Should we breathe today? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we don't breathe today. It, it's not a question. It's just what happens. It's, it's who you are. You're not just going to a destination. You're being who God has called you to be. You are the church. Someone here this morning say, I want to be planted. I want to be the church. I don't want to just question, am I going to church? Anybody here this morning saying, I want to be planted in the house? Come on, let's get excited about that. The Greek word for church is, is ekklesia. Everyone say that, ekklesia. Scholars in this house. It means to gather, it means to assemble. In other words, if you, if you just listen to a preacher's podcast, that's good, that's great. But there's no, there's no gathering, there's no assembling there. You're missing something. As, as a, a parent with your teenager, I want you to think, what if your only interaction with your teenager was them listening to a voicemail from you? Because how many know your kids don't answer the phone, so you just leave voicemails for them all the time. But can you imagine if, if the only form of communication you had with your, with your teenage child, with, with a family member, was just through voicemail? 
That's not what you want. You don't want to just talk to them through voicemail. You want to gather around the table. You want to be together. You want to share life. You want to know what happened at school. You want to know what's going on in their day. Man, we got to gather together. We can't just go through life receiving stuff through our earbuds. We got to be a part of something. We got to be assembled. We got to be gathered together. And when you're planted, you see that things will begin to change. When you're planted, you don't just come in and you don't just spiritually consume. You don't just come and say, oh, feed me. Give me what I need to hear, and then I'm going to leave. But rather you recognize what I'm hearing is for me, but it's also to give to somebody else. You realize that I, I'm here to get stuff from God. I want to hear from God, but I also, I, I can be a light to someone here. I can share hope with someone here. I can, I can lift someone up. I can gather around them. When you realize that you are planted in the house rather than just coming to, to church, you realize that the church, it doesn't exist for you. If you're planted here, this does not exist for you. Why? Because you are the church and you exist for the lost. We, we don't just do this so that church people can come and have a good time. Man, our goal is to reach lost people. And if all we're doing is showing up to a building and going through the motions and leaving, then what are we even doing? But we, we exist for the lost. And that can be uncomfortable. That can mean things happening the way that maybe you don't like it. Some, some songs being sang that, that you don't like. Some style of thing happening that, that's not your favor. It costs money, it's uncomfortable, but guess what? It could reach lost people. You recognize that this isn't for me, but I'm here and I'm here for them. Let's be a church that's planted. Let's be a church that, that wants more. So I want to look at this this morning. What, what happens when you are planted? What happens when you're planted? And I just have two points this morning. The first is this, is that your roots grow deep. Your roots grow deep. Jeremiah 17, 8, it says this, They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I wonder how many people are here this morning and you're going through some sort of heat in life, some sort of struggle in life, some sort of drought. Maybe it's spiritual drought. You just are here and you just, you feel dry. And yet you're going through a tough time in life. But I want you to know that when you're connected to the source, when you're planted by the source, when you're planted in the house and you got the source right there, it can feed you that even when it's a dry season, even when life gets tough, you can still produce leaves. Your, your leaves are still green. You're still producing fruit. Where are you planted at? Has anyone ever seen a redwood tree before? Anyone ever seen a redwood tree? Here's a picture of one. I was reading about these trees and these trees are massive. All right, has anybody ever like been to somewhere and you've seen it? They're massive. I was reading that they can grow up to 30 stories tall. That's a big tree. I've never seen one like that in Urbandale. 30 stories tall and three stories wide. That's massive. And I, I was looking a little bit more into this and I found that their root system, it can go up to 150 feet down and 150 feet side to side. So think about this. You have one giant redwood tree that's here that's 30 f stories high, one that's over there that's 30 stories high, and their, their root systems are going 150 feet side to side. Guess what's happening? Their roots are intertwining. There's more than what you see on the surface. Down below, beneath the surface, there's a support system where their roots are growing deep, where their roots are intertwining, where they're holding each other up. So when the wind blows, it doesn't knock the tree down. Man, I want to be a church where our roots grow deep, where they grow into each other, where we're holding each other up so that when the wind blows, when the storm comes, when life gets hard, I'm not easily pushed over. I'm not easily shoved down. I can get back up. I can stand strong because someone is supporting me. Come on, let's, let's get our roots deep. Let's not just be shallow about this. This is, this is what we need to be as a body of Christ, this forest of these trees with these, these roots that are growing deep. I can promise you this, this week, this month, you will face opposition. You, you will face difficult times. And going through it alone, man, that's, that's a bad spot to be at. I think Satan's okay with you going to church, to be honest with you. If you're going to church and then you're just leaving, if you're not planted, I think, I think he actually loves it because he makes you think like, hey, you've got this. Like, God's got you. You're all good to go. And then he throws stuff at you and say, well, where's my, where's my, where's my church family? Where's, where's God at in this? And he's saying, where are you planted? Where are your roots? Man, if we can get roots 
if we can be planted with each other, if we can be planted in the house when the storm comes, when we're not doing it alone, we can hold each other up. We can lean on someone. We can say, hey, I need help. Hey, I'm gonna pray for you and you pray for me. Our roots, they have to go deep. What happens when you're planted? Your roots, they grow deep. And number two is this, you produce fruit. Read the same verse again. They'll be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought. And it never fails to bear fruit. When you are planted, you produce fruit. When you are planted, you produce fruit. What is fruit? The Apostle Paul talks in Galatians 5 about the fruits of the Spirit and how it's not our own natural fruit, but it's fruit that comes from God. What are these things that when we're connected, what, that when our roots grow deep, it says that God produces these things in us of, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. When we're planted, we bear these fruits. We produce fruit when we are planted. Good things come out. Man, you're wondering, why, why when this happens do bad things always come out, right? Some of you guys, you can't tame the tongue. You're like, ah, I almost get in a car accident every time I say this word. Every time this happens, all my kids do this, every time I, I flip out. Oh man, that my boss does this, and every time I, I, the thoughts that come to my head, you're saying, why don't good things come out? When you're planted and your roots grow deep, you produce fruit. And that fruit isn't even necessarily for you. That love, it's for someone else. That joy that God gives you, it's contagious. Man, we, we need to be planted so that, so that we can be full of what is good and so that we can give, so that we can be a blessing to others. But we, we we're planted. You are, I want you to know this, New Hope, that you are needed here at New Hope. This church, you might think this church is, is so big. This church isn't big enough for you to walk in those doors, come sit down, and then for you to leave again. But you're needed here. You're, you're needed somewhere. You're needed to serve here, to help out here. Maybe that's getting plugged into a small group being a part of a small group that meets in a home. Maybe that's greeting at the doors on Sunday mornings, on Sunday nights, on Wednesdays. Maybe that's uh, do, being an usher with the offering. Maybe that's helping clean, being on our, our cleaning team that just volunteers. This whole building's cleaned by just volunteers. Maybe that's serving in the kids in the early childhood. Maybe that's being a youth leader. Man, I have so many youth students that come in every week without a mom or a dad who, who don't come at all to the church on Sunday mornings. They're, they're coming all on their own on Wednesday nights. They don't have a mom or a dad. And you're saying, I'm too old to be a youth leader. Man, these kids, they need a spiritual father. They need a spiritual mother, spiritual, a grandma, a grandfather. Man, serve somewhere, get plugged in. Don't just sit there and consume, consume, and then leave. Man, serve, be a part of something bigger than yourself. You are needed here, so get planted. If you would stand across this room this morning as we prepare to close, I want you to know this, there is such a big difference between going to church and being planted in church. There's such a big difference between going to church and actually being the church. Do you really think that you'll be able to face the struggles of life by just coming to church once a month or so? Do you really think that when you spend more money on coffee than you give to missions, that you're really becoming a true disciple of Jesus? Do you think that when we spend more time on Facebook, Instagram, social media, than we do serving others, that we are really being transformed into the image of Christ? Do you believe that, that when that your, your child, your family is being planted into the house when they're going to sports instead of church? But no, we need, to, we need to make this decision this morning saying, you know what, I'm in, I'm planted, I'm flourishing, I, I, I'm connected, my roots, they're growing deep, I'm bearing fruit, I'm being a blessing to others. How are you doing? I'm flourishing, I'm blessed, I'm, I'm blessing others, I, I'm connected, I'm praying for them and they're praying for me. I'm a part of this, my roots, they're deep, they're intertwined. So let's sing this out this morning and say this, declare, I'm in, I'm yours, God.